we now do an ANOVA test for different scenarios. So consider a table like this. This is the ID of different subjects and you give them three different factors. So in our case these three different factors could be three different diets and then for each subject, subject ID is 1, 4 is the response to diet 1, 6 is response to diet 2, 6 is response to diet 3. So this response could be blood sugar or pulse. Now this can also be used in surveys. So you're asking a survey and you have question 1 here, question 2 here and question 3 here and the subject 1 responds 4 to question 1, 6 to question 2, 6 to question 3. Or you're working in a financial market and this is stock 1 and this is percentage return in scenario 1 which could be say strengthening of interest rate. In scenario 2 decrease in interest rate and in scenario 3 which could be say strengthening of currency. So three different scenarios. So you could formulate this problem in uh, different ways. So once you have a data like this, we want to determine if these three diets or three scenarios have different impact on the response of the subject. So is D1 different from D2 and different from D3? Now if the answer is yes, then we want to further find out which of these factors are different. So which of these scenarios or diets are different from each other? So we have to do a test of D1 versus D2, is this different? D2 versus D3, is this different? D3 versus D1, is this different? Now before we feed this table into R, we have to format it. So we have to format this table properly so that we can feed it into R. So we have to reformat the table before feeding it into R. So this is how we reformat it. So for ID 1, so this is ID is 1, ID is 1, his response is 4 to diet 1. So 4 to diet 1, then ID 2, his response is 5 to diet 1. So 2, 5, response is diet 1. So response is 5 to diet 1. Then ID is 3, response is 4 to diet 1. 3, response is 4 to diet 1. And you go all the way to 9, then you come back to 1 again. Then you have diet 2. So 1, response is 6 to diet 2. So 1, response is 6 to diet 2. 2, response is 8 to diet 2. So then again all the way to 9, then you come back again 1. Response is 6 to diet 3. So response is 6 to diet 3. Then 2. Response is 7 to diet 3. So response is 7 to diet 3. So you will uh, have a table like this. So you will have 27 rows. So 9 rows for diet 1. Then 9 rows for diet 2. And then 9 rows for diet 3. So 9 times 3 will give you 27 rows. So once you format the data, then you feed it into R. So first clear the memory and then you read this data in. So anyway, you should go to this uh, link and see how the data looks like. So this is the address and this part is the name of the file. So header is true. So once you feed in the data, now we'll do the ANOVA test. Now we run the model. So you name the model as results, analysis of variance, response is to diet in the data set D2. So we had stored our data in D2. Then you take the summary. So you have diet. In front of diet you have three stars. That means diet is significant. That is diet does have significant impact. So diet is significant. More formally the null hypothesis is that there is no difference between diets. No difference between diets. And you reject this hypothesis if the p-value of your test is less than 0 0.05.
So this is the p-value. So this column gives you the p-value. So you can see this is less than 0 0.05. So you reject the hypothesis that there is no difference between diets. So you say there is significant difference between diets. So there are three stars here. That means the p-value is less than 0 0.001. So if there is a single star, that means the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So if even if there is a single star here, that means this factor diet is very significant. Now, once you know that there is a difference between diets, the impact of diets is different, then you need to find out between individual diets, are they different? So for that, you use this two key test. You put in the name of the model results, and this is the output. So here, this gives you D2 versus D1. In here, this is D3 versus D1, this is D3 versus D2. So this gives you a 95% confidence interval. So this is the lower bound of the confidence interval. This is the upper bound of the confidence interval. So first notice D2 versus D1. So lower bound is 0.82, upper bound is 3.3. .3. It does not contain zero. So this is significant. D3 versus D1. Starts from 0.94, ends at 3.5. This interval does not contain zero. So this is also significant. D3 versus D2 starts from minus 1.1 ends at 1.3 contains a zero in between so this is not significant if you do not want to look at the confidence intervals you can use another test which is for the p-value this is adjusted p-value p adjusted so if it is less than 0 0.05 it is significant just like here so you can see 0 0.001 is less than 0 0.05, so this is significant. 0 0.0006 is less than 0 0.05, it is significant. 0 0.97, this is greater than 0 0.05, so not significant. So you can use either p-values or the confidence interval. So you can find that there is difference between diets. Diet 1 and diet 2 are significantly different. Diet 3 and diet 1 are significantly different. But there is no difference between diet 3 and diet 2.